Welcome to Canadian Independent Media. It's December 3rd. Here in British Columbia, our new NDP government is about to make a huge decision. What to do with the Site C dam? If we go ahead with Site C, the odds are it will be an environmental and economic disaster for the people of British Columbia. And I think disaster is the plan. Site C is not about what's best for the people of British Columbia. Site C is about giving billions of our dollars to the 1% of the 1%. For the people at the top, publicly funded mega projects are great ideas. They make billions from these projects, and the rest of us go into debt to pay for them. It's win-win for the 1%. There are many examples of these projects right across our country. Site C is just one. It could cost 15 to 20 billion dollars to build, plus, of course, another 10 to 15 billion dollars in interest costs. And the more the merrier, since we are paying and they are getting. The corporate media and the politicians tell us this is a tough decision to make. But we should remember that Canada's big media is all owned by Corporate Canada. And we should never trust the corporate media to tell us the truth about any important issue. A lot is made of the jobs that will be lost if we stop Site C. In fact, jobs seem to be one of the main reasons for continuing with Site C. And we all want good jobs for people. But Site C is not the way to more jobs. Here is Green Party MLA Sonia Furstenau in the BC Legislature on September 20th about the impacts on jobs and economy from cancelling this project, a new report has just been released from UBC that looks at jobs numbers. This report, based on independent research, shows that cancelling Site C is actually the decision that supports workers and creates jobs. The researchers found, it's always good to read research, that cancelling Site C and pursuing an alternative portfolio of wind and conservation results in five times as many jobs as continuing five times as many jobs as continuing. We are also told over and over that hydropower is clean and green. That's another lie. Hydropower is not clean or green. We all know about the huge area of first-class farmland that Site C will destroy if it goes ahead. Site C will also be a climate change disaster. Here's an article from the New Scientist in 2005. This story is 12 years old. It says, hydroelectric dams produce significant amounts of carbon dioxide and methane, and in some cases, produce more of these greenhouse gases than power plants running on fossil fuels. But here in Victoria, our daily paper tells us over and over again how clean hydro is. They're lying to us. As well, the entire reservoir will be contaminated with mercury. When you create a reservoir, the flooded lands give off mercury. All life in the Site C reservoir will become contaminated with mercury. It will not be safe to eat the fish from the reservoir. Too bad the wildlife won't know that, and they too will be poisoned. Also, the liars at BC Hydro told us from the very beginning that Site C was cheaper than alternatives, like wind. The media knew these numbers were a lie, but they kept the story secret. Only now are we beginning to hear the truth. If the people of BC had been told the true costs of Site C years ago, this crazy project would never have even been started. Christy Clark was in on these lies from the beginning. And this is billions of dollars she has cost us. But there's no investigation, no criminal charges, nothing. And of course, what could go wrong? Well, here's an update on the giant Muskrat Falls hydroelectric power reservoir in Newfoundland and Labrador. Let's see how well that project is doing. And the story says that electricity rates for Newfoundlanders will double by 2022 because of Muskrat Falls. But the Premier says it won't bankrupt the province. How good is that? Site C is already a disaster for British Columbia. If it goes ahead, it will become an even bigger disaster. That's what our politicians and the media and corporations are doing to us. It really has to stop. 
Here's a short reminder of a past story. California is using fracking wastewater to irrigate its food crops, and has been for years, and we are eating that food. I've stopped buying organic oranges from California because they've started to taste very weird. Under the rules, fracking water can even be used to irrigate organic crops. And of course, nobody's bothering to mention this to Canadians. Our governments do nothing and say nothing. The media do nothing and say nothing. That's how ridiculous things have become in Canada. They poison our food and they don't even bother to tell us. The people who run our country are deliberately creating hatred and fear against Muslim Canadians. Our rulers seem to want Canadians to be divided, and they want us fighting each other. So they deliberately create trouble and enemies in order to pit us against each other. Their campaign has been evil, but quite successful. Look at what they've accomplished. This trouble is not happening by accident. This is the plan, to keep us divided and unaware of reality as the corporations steal everything and destroy everything. Here's an example of how they do it to us. On Canada Day, on the morning of July 1st, 2013, two people planted pressure cooker bombs at the BC legislative buildings, a place where a lot of families and children would soon be gathering. The terrorists' goal, it seemed, was to kill a lot of people at the Canada Day celebrations. How terrible is that? The two bombers were, of course, Muslims. They had become Muslims a few years earlier. So the story we were fed was this, Muslim terrorists plant bombs on Canada Day. But luckily, the RCMP was there to save the day. What a great story. And Canada's media loved it. They loved putting together the words Muslim and terror and bombs. Our rulers want us divided and fearful and fighting each other. And this is how they do it. Of course, the entire story of the B.C. legislature bombing turned out to be a pack of lies. A B.C. Supreme Court judge freed the two bombers after they had spent a couple of years in jail. The judge said the bombing had been set up not by the bombers, but by the RCMP itself. So the RCMP and the government set up a fake terror bombing in Victoria, B.C., and then the media spent two years blaming Muslim Canadians for something the RCMP had done. Here's how Global News presented the story to Canadians. The story says, Accused terrorist John Nuttall told an undercover officer that he converted to Islam because he wanted jihad. That's a pretty good story. You've got the words terrorist, Islam, and jihad all together in one paragraph. In my opinion, Global TV must have known that what they were telling Canadians was not true. But they told us the lies anyways, because they are liars. Their job is to lie to us, because that's how they control us. But now the two accused bombers have been set free by the judge. But this is a bit of a loose end. It makes the government and the politicians look bad. So now Justin Trudeau is going to wrap up that loose end. The Trudeau government is going to appeal the judge's decision to set John Nuttall and Amanda Carotti free. The case goes to court, I believe, in January of 2018. And Mr. Trudeau plans to lock these people up for a very long time if he can. The entire story is a disgrace. Our government and the RCMP and the media worked together to spread fear and hate in Canada against Muslim Canadians in order to divide and control the people of Canada. The real attack on our democracy seems to be coming from our own rulers, and there seems to be little or nothing we can do about it. Too bad for us all. That's Canadian Independent Media for this week. Thank you very much for watching.